here in the hidden alleyways of Paris, you can sometimes find pasta games. the Grand Palace of Pasta. Mm, yeah. Chief Pasta Chef Fabian, tell me a little bit about Pasta Games then. How did you end up with such a silly name? Oh, yeah. In the south of France, we, we like uh, pastis. We call that pasta -ga. We were uh, drinking a pasta -ga during an aperitif and saying, what we are missing these days is small games that you can share with friends while having an aperitif. And then we noticed that um, foreigners did not really get the point about past what pastaga. So we had this brilliant idea just to, to put an M and E and S at the end and say that it is past the games. So you made a load of DS games, you made mobile games too? A lot of mobile games. iPhone was fantastic, a new device for everything. We come from cellular phones before the smartphones came uh, out. Feature phones. Feature phones, which yeah. Which is ironic because they actually had no features. We used to do games that were on the phones at their launch and you could not touch them anymore. So that was an old time and it was really nice. So the, the, the manufacturers would give you a check and you'd yeah. give them the game and yeah. everyone would have more pasties. Exactly. Fabian, what's this? This? Oh, it's the pasta button. What happens if you press it? You have to find out, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about some of your most important games then. We made a, a game with um, plushes with Build-A-Bear Workshop. This right. one sold good. And then we made a game with uh, at least two games with Rayman. Those sold good. We right. were in partnership with um, Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. And then we made games for our own pleasure with our own IPs. And the Maestro uh, Jumping Music was a big one for you, right? Yeah, it was a big investment for us. So and what was a big that? investment of love, of money, of time. But we were super happy to see that it was a real success, at least for players. So it's a musical platformer game. You mentioned Pix the Cat before, and we got some Pix the Cat yes. memorabilia here. Who was Pix the Cat? So Pix the Cat is now uh, our mascot, our uh, main character in the company, representing the company. And then um, it's a small kitten that appears first in a game on Xbox Live Arcade and it was a simple platformer, very basic but very charming with this little cat. Half of Pasta Games, 100% of Pasta Games Paris because we are also in Montpellier. Montpellier and Canada. Oh yeah and of course in Quebec. So as, as everybody knows darts is the most important British sport. Uh, so I'm clearly going to win at this. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to present the special dart watch to our winner today. Look at that, that's such a beautiful thing. You should be very proud. So uh, what, what happened next then? Because that, that was all over 10 years ago. We wanted to go online because we were thinking that what if you don't have friends at home for aperitifs? And it's been a long trip, so along the way, we learned how to make online games. So we, uh, we've been doing uh, Pac-Man uh, Party Royale. We made Arkanoid Eternal Battle, which was another work for hire, but online too. And Karmazoo would, would in turn benefit from the experience you gain from these uh, work for hire games. The pitch for Karmazoo was quite simple. A game where you share the love, where you share the load, where you share the successes, you share the failures, you share the victory, you share everything. Where did the idea at the heart of Karmazoo come from? I like to think, but I don't know if it's true, that it comes from the metro in Paris. Paris is not the easiest city to live in, and people going to the office in the morning, not the, not the most polite people, except in one place, on the doors outside leaving the metro. And people actually hold the doors for one another. And people actually look at each other in the eye and share a moment. And we said, hey, even in the midst of all this nonsense, people manage to be nice and kind to one another. Let's make a game exactly on that idea. Your game is born out of a fundamental faith in humanity. Exactly. And born out of the faith that it's context that creates behavior. Uh, 
double, double clap. This is flamenco. Here we are in a very bright, sunny Parisian back alley with Nico. Hi. Nico, what are you responsible for in Karmazoo? I'm responsible for the sound chaos. I put a lot of sound in the game, so it's a, a big mess. Okay, so I believe you're going to walk us through some of your most delicious sound effects today. Yeah, I got some toys. For example, these are decoys when you, you hunt. This one has been used for the, the mouse in game, for example. I feel like you've irritated some of the birds with that noise. Uh, this one, I think it's, uh, it has been used for the duck. The birds are still very excited. Yeah. <laughs> this one, it has been used for the, the spinning top in the game. It can be very loud. <laughs> so where do you buy these from? Have you got like a local cartoon sound effects shop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got a big shop in the, down in my basement. Yeah. So you're, you're constantly growing your collection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a, 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 an extract. Nico uses a lot of cutting edge technology. This is the, the main item for the sound design of the game. This is a new technology. All the sound in the game uh, has been recorded through uh, this device. Uh, let me show you some example. Oh. The duck, yeah. It's my voice. Whoa! Sorry. <laughs> it's not in the game. Yeah, Pepper. So this is your voice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, the flower pot. So, kids, believe it or not, this is an actual job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great job, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Fantastic job, I recommend it. At what stage did you realize exactly how complicated this was to do? Online, one word. It opens all the doors, right? Mm. Because you get people to play together. This is what we want, we want to bring people together. You know all these uh, big you know, bass lines for companies? like uh, connecting people and come as you are and bring people together and all that nonsense that they never keep their promises. Yeah. Well, we just wanted to do it for real in a small game. What, what, what we thought was a small game before we decided to add 50 characters, each with their personal ability, before we decided to add modes to play with your friends, modes to play online, locally, not locally, both at the same time, cross-play, not cross-play in 22 languages, you know. We have P PS5, Xbox Series, Switch, uh, Steam, Epic, Microsoft Game Store. Let's, let's go all the way now. Just a small, simple project. Tell me a little bit about how the Karma system works. So the Karma system is quite simple. It's about gratitude and saying thank you. So the only um, currency in the game are these Karma hearts. The only way to get Karma hearts is to be helpful to others and get eat every time more powerful and more useful abilities. There's a million ways to help others. The starting way, the basic way, is to drop a tombstone on a spike. Somebody else jumps on it, uses your tombstone to cross a platforming chasm or something, some, some situation that you have to solve. This is the, the standard way to win. Then you can use your personal power. For example, the whale will create a platform with the water spat out of its head. So if somebody else jumps on it and goes higher, you will win a heart. Then you can do the simple task of holding a door open back to the metro. Hold the door open, you get a heart. When you, this person will pass the door, they will have to stand on the other button on the other side to send the gratitude back to you. Okay. So it will be a, a two-way street. But then you can also say thank you manually because we have the karma bow. You send the heart to anyone you want. So you can actually throw hearts. Exactly. And whomever wants, tries to catch it. So it creates some gameplay inside the game. Yeah. So it is a virtuous cycle. What are we doing? We're gonna play some totem. Totem. Versus mode. Versus you, mode. you actually taunted me and you told me you might win. I well, would like to see that. What am I doing? Winning, right? I don't know, I hope so. I'll Here's a hot spot. No! 
Did I win, really? Yeah, you did. Now you can dance. You can, you can taunt me by dancing like this. And did you have the Star Wars vibe? Oh, what, pod race? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, no. No, come on. I'm back. I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm using what? every trick in the book to win. What? There's no beating me. No. Here we go. You've won. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well I wanted done. my own game. What a pride, yeah, proud well. moment for me. We are at the cement tile workshop of César. Hello. We are here doing a special Kamazu tile workshop with the Kamazu team. So children, I will show you how to make one tile and after it will be your turn to make your tile. This is very stressful. Look at our beautiful work. Kamazu then is the most ambitious thing you've done so far. Yes, definitely. Are you, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we've been thinking all along the years. Uh, we, we almost killed the game three or four times. Really? Because, yeah, because it was super expensive. Super we can't do difficult. This. <laughs> We were looking for a publisher who was uh, mad enough. As stupid to, uh, as you are. Yeah, yeah, as stupid okay. as we are. And it's been difficult because there are a lot of smart people uh, uh, out there. And we, we were looking for somebody completely mad and who were okay to risk uh, publishing a game that nobody knows whether, whether it, would, it will sell or not. And you found them. You found us. <laughs> you found yeah, in terms of silliness, we were really happy. Kamazu is about to come out and be released into the world. How are you feeling about that? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see how people are going to break it, how people are going to solve things, that, find things that we couldn't have imagined, how we're going to help destroy what the trolls and the griefers do. I mean, this, there's a, there's a, it's not like other releases. It's a game that we know is online and that we're going to... I mean, it's not a single game that we just push and then we see what happens. It, it's a game that also we're going to stick to and we're going to see how it works and we're going to adapt it and change it live to make it the best possible experience of, in the first few, we few weeks of release. The car of a tree! Where? Where? Where?